आज़ादी तो बहुत मिली है लेकिन इसका महत्व समझ में नहीं आता समझने के लिए ये वीडियो ज़रूर देखिए और उसके पहले मेरे चैनल को सब्सक्राइब ज़रूर कीजिएगा तो चलिए ये प्यारा वीडियो देखते हैं बाबा वाई इज बैरकपुर कॉल्ड बैरकपुर द नेम डजेंट क्वाइट साउंड लाइक अ बांग्ला वर्ड द नेम ऑफ दिस सिटी प्रोबेबली डिराइव फ्रॉम द इंग्लिश वर्ड बैरक as this was the place where the first cantonment of the british east india company was built this city has an important mention in the history of our country joy do you know its significance no hmm then let's start from the fall of the mogul dynasty in fact why don't we rewind a bit further to the arrival of vasco da gama in india from ancient times india had trade contacts with many countries like greece rome arabia Persia, Egypt, Java, Sumatra, Burma and Ceylon. In 1498, Vasco da Gama, a Portuguese explorer, found a sea route to India from Europe. He docked at Calicut in Kerala and started trading from there. Gradually, the Portuguese took control of the west coast by setting up trading centers at Kochi, Kannur and Calicut. These trading centers were called companies. These companies bought Indian spices cotton textiles and other material which were sold at higher prices in Europe and America by the early 18th century the portuguese were replaced by the companies of england and france their trade flourished in india attracting the other europeans to settle here this was how the dutch the french and the british came to india to trade their goods the british came to trade i thought they came to rule our country That was probably their hidden motive all along. The Mughal Emperor Jahangir was the first king to allow the British traders to establish their trading centers in India. The first center was set up in the year 1608 at Surat in Gujarat, followed by others in Chennai, Kolkata, Mumbai and a few cities of Bihar and Bengal. The East India Company was set up in the year 1600 in London. with the permission of the then queen of england to administer their trade in india the political situation in india was very weak then as jahangir's successors were not strong as kings this gave an opportunity to the british to build forts and set up armies in their trading centers they claimed that they were doing so to protect their trading centers but in reality they were preparing to establish their rule in the country Sirajud Dola the Nawab of Bengal was against the building of forts around the British trading centers in India he insisted that the british should demolish their forts the british who had become very powerful by then waged a war against the nawab in 1757 this war was known as the battle of plassey under the leadership of robert clive the british defeated the nawab and established the british east india company in india after the war Listen to your father carefully son this period of indian history is stirring the british used their diplomacy and exploited the rifts between indian rulers for their own interests they used this divide and rule policy to subjugate us for the next 190 years that's right and after prolonged dissatisfaction of the masses with the british rule in 1857 mangal pande revolted against his seniors in the city of barakpur Why was there dissatisfaction with the British rule, Baba? What did the British do? They caused deep unrest among Indians through their unfair governance. Heavy taxes were levied on our farmers. They were forced to grow cotton and indigo for the cotton mills in England, but were paid very little. The raw materials were taken from India, and the finished goods were brought from England and sold here at higher prices. We were pushed into poverty. And artisans, Indian artisans and weavers were affected by the inflow of mill-made products from England. These machine-made goods were cheaper than Indian products. Indian industries incurred heavy losses and many had to shut shop. Lakhs of people were unemployed. Moreover, the British neither allowed Indians to open mills and factories nor trade in things of their choice. Your uncle is quite right. That's not all. Various policies were made by the British to bring Indian territories under their control. One such policy was the doctrine of lapse. 
It was introduced by a British governor named Lord Dalhousie. According to this policy, if an Indian ruler died without leaving a son as heir, his kingdom would be brought directly under the British rule. The kings who were considered weak and could not oppose the British were forced to surrender to the policy. The Nawab of Awadh was one such ruler. The province of Jhansi and parts of Maratha kingdoms were also seized under this policy. The list of causes for unrest is long and this train ride too short. I can tell you only one thing. What Mangal Pandey did was very brave. I myself would not have found the courage to do that. Okay, Dada, I must take your leave now. My station has come. It was nice to meet you. The pleasure is mine. How brave, how glorious, how admirable. What did Mangal Pandey do? Hmm. In 1857, there was a rumor that the British are introducing some kind of ammunition which has a wrapper greased with pig and cow fat and the sepoys are supposed to bite off this wrapper before loading the rifle. This would be outrageous for both Hindu and Muslim sepoys for cows are considered sacred by Hindus and pig meat is forbidden for Muslims. That's an immoral move. Whether this rumor was true or not is not known. However, on March 29, 1857, a soldier named Mangal Pandey decided that he would no longer tolerate being mistreated by the British. Fuming with anger, he attacked his lieutenant near the parade grounds at Barakpur. Then, after some struggle, Mangal Pandey and his accomplice were captured by the British. They were both sentenced to death by hanging. Oh no. News of this injustice soon reached other provinces. Starting from Meerut, sepoys across India rebelled against their British seniors. They went to Delhi and made the Mughal Emperor Bahadur Shah Zafar their king. Rani Lakshmi Bai of Jhansi, Begum Hazrat Mahal of Awadh, Nana Sahib Peshwa, Tantia Tope, and many other nawabs and rulers also joined the protesting sepoys. The freedom struggle spread all over the country. Then, why did India have to wait until 1947 to gain independence? That's another 90 years, right? That's right. The British eventually suppressed the revolt of 1857 with their strong army and modern weapons. Rani of Jhansi was killed during this battle. Bahadur Shah Zafar was exiled to Rangoon in Burma, where he died in 1862, finally bringing the Mughal dynasty to an end. In 1858, East India Company's rule ended in India, and the British government took over the reign. In 1877, Queen Victoria took the title of the Empress of India. She appointed viceroys who acted as her representatives and ruled over India. But the War of 1857, even in its failure, produced many Indian heroes. Above all, it created a sense of unity among the people of India, which was witnessed at the time of independence. We have reached Sialda. We must deboard here, Joy. Come, let's go. Baba are all Britishers bad people Not at all dear Every person in this world has the potential to be both extremely good and extremely bad son Which of these you become is a choice that you yourself must make Always remember that Come let's go now शायद अब आप लोगों को पता ही चला होगा कि आजादी मिलने के लिए क्या-क्या किया है तो इस वीडियो को लाइक कीजिए शेयर कीजिए सब्सक्राइब कीजिए धन्यवाद